Hello, friends. So I wanted to take a moment today to discuss money making for a tutorial. Um, there's several ways to make money in this game, and in how much you make depends on what avenue you would prefer to go in order to make the money. So I put together a document that will be listed in the comments below with the top three preferred ways to make money. Um, the number one way of making money, especially early on in this game, is going to be fishing. Now, when you're fishing in this game, um, the very beginning, you're only going to have sardines that'll be down here. They're not worth that much, but they're still worth far more than anything else you can get in the beginning area. You can go over here in this particular pond next to that um, farm in the breezy plains. There's this pond right here. There's some arowana and green arowana if you're lucky. They're worth a fair amount, but it's not until you open up and unlock Lily Kala that you'll be able to earn money fishing at a decent amount. Um, once you get the docks built, instead of, you focus a lot down here to get tuna for recipes, but for money making, you'll wanna go to this tiny little dock over here and fish off of it, especially if you only have the expert rod, which is one of the things that you get while rebuilding Lily Kala. This will be your favorite spot to fish because the fish are not as hard to catch and they're worth a decent amount of money. You'll be able to get um, things like Pollock, Saffron Cod, um, those are both going to be fairly good money. A base Pollock is 1650 by itself. A Saffron Cod with no stars is 2420 um, and if you're lucky, you could get, um, or if you're unlucky, I should say, you could get cod, which is only 550 for a base price, or a uh, hoochin, which is a DLC fish, and I don't know if I pronounced that right, maybe it's hutchin, but that type of fish is just a thousand base price with no stars. Either one of those are still good money, and you don't have to fight them very hard because they're not large fish for the saffron cod or the pollock which is your big money makers but once you unlock your master or legendary or goddess you're going to start fishing up here in the hilltop fish pond to get a golden carp and once you've unlocked the volcano you're going to go to the volcano summit and right here in this lava area right there i'll mark it that's where you're going to get um, a fairly reliable Nidhogg. Those ones are by far the most uh, worthwhile fish. A Nidhogg is a base price with no stars, 7,700. You can sometimes find them up here in... If it's raining, there will be a pond over here. And various ponds pop up in the desert and that's where they will show up. I'll just show you really quick. Searching for the Nidhogg here. These are the areas that you can fish but they're not going to have anything there until it's raining and then you'll get some ponds out here that you could possibly get a Nidhogg in. This one sometimes has a Nidhogg in it and it always has water in it. And down here is the easiest one to get to because there's this Volcano Summit warp statue right here next to the Nidhogg, which is right there. So you can get them at other areas in the volcano. It requires a lot more walking. But if you've unlocked the summit, it's a very quick way to check and see if there's a Nidhogg in there and catch it really quick. Um, the next way to make money, especially early in the game and before you get your fishing pole unlocked, you're going to be mining. In Lectonbury, you're not going to have a lot of uh, money mining here in the mine right here, 
but you are going to be able to get uh, agates. They are not worth a lot. They're only 33 when it's just the raw agates and 50 when they're processed, which actually is a really good deal because it's only five, um, five coins to get it processed. So you make quite a bit of profit there. And agates you get all over the place in Lectonberry Mine. They are very plentiful there. Also, uh, in the later levels, um, levels 31 uh, to the, basically to the end, you can get Amethyst, which is 110 just as the ore and 165 processed. You can also, those same levels in Lectonberry Mine, if you have unlocked level 31 all the way to the end of the mine, which I believe it only has 49 or 50 levels or something. The last one is Moonstone that you can get there. Um, that one's the same as the Amethyst at 110 as just the ore or 165 processed. Those are going to be the, you're going to have other gems that pop up in there, but those are going to be the ones that you get a lot. So they'll be the ones that'll be making you the most money because you'll have stacks of them if you're farming that quite often. Now, early, early in the game, you may not make it all the way down to level 31. So you might be opening up, say, the Lily Columbine. Um, while you're working on that one, if you drop the Lily Colla wall, you can make it to the Lily Columbine. In that one, you're going to be able to get Jade throughout it, and that's going to be worth more than the Agates. Um, that's going to be uh, $44 for the raw gem. 66 for processed so that one is a little bit more to get it processed but again it's still um, more money that you get back when it's processed than if you were just to leave it raw so if you have the money to process it it is a good source lily kala if you get to level 21 uh, crystal is pretty plentiful you'll be using that a lot to make your sprinklers as well but once you're done setting up your automated sprinkler systems in your farms, you might just go to level 21 or higher to farm crystal because it's 55 raw and 83 processed and it, you just get gobs of it. It's just, it'll, it'll be a very plentiful one that you can get there. Now, if you're looking for more rare, higher quality, this mine is good for tanzanite if you get all the way down to level 61. So you have to get fairly far down in there, but level 61 and more you can get tanzanite. It's 770 just for the raw gemstone, 1155 when it's processed, and you will need tanzanite for a few requests and a few uh, unlocking quests, especially if you have the DLC and you want to unlock the goddess. Uh, tools. Now, over in Herbsburg, this will be the next one that you open up just from opening up the town. You don't even have to drop the wall because as soon as you can get into the town, you can just uh, go from the square and ride all the way down to the mine. Here in the mine, you're going to get gemstones. It's going to be fairly deep before you get them consistently and you'll be getting other gemstones in all of these mines it's just these are the ones that are very plentiful that you will be able to sell a lot of to make a good profit so the uh, pariba tourmaline i think that's how you say it or the tourmaline it's 880 raw 1320 processed but you have to be level 61 to 69 in Herbsburg to get it in a plentiful manner. You'll get other uh, gems throughout, but that's what you're going to find in Herbsburg. The, um, I'm not a big fan of Providence for gemstones. I do mine there occasionally, but more so for ore. You can get glass throughout it, if you're just trying to farm glass for materials, um, it's not worth much because it's only 11 for the raw glass, 17 for processed glass, which really isn't worth processing it to sell it. 
but you do use glass quite a bit for a lot of recipes, a lot of requests, and a lot of rebuilding. So just keep that in mind. If you're ever low on glass and you just want to go in for a very quick run to grab a just a ton of glass, you can go to Providence and all throughout the mine, it's going to have lots of glass. Um, the My favorite uh, mine, aside from the volcano, is going to be the Zimigrod mine. This one um, is going to come later in the game. You might be able to upgrade your hammer by the time you start really getting deep into here, which helps a lot in mining. Um, in Zimigrod, you're going to find aquamarine a lot. Uh, I'd say that's going to be fairly deep too. So you're going to have to get down to like level 51 or level 71 if you want to get the most of it, I think. Um, also, if you're just looking for... Because aquamarine you're going to use for sprinklers. But if you're just looking for money in Zimigrod... Just at level 21, you can start getting opal, which is 110 for the raw gemstone, 165 processed, and you'll get gobs of that just from level 21 going forward. And if you're looking for alexandrite, which is a commonly requested high-end material, you're going to need at least one to unlock the goddess tools. That is going to be level 71 plus in Zimagrod, so basically the very end part of Zimagrod. And that one is 2,200 for the raw gemstone, 3,300 processed, and you're going to get a lot of it more after level 71. Even though you might get a few before then, that's when you, it becomes more plentiful. So if you have upgraded and you're ready to tackle the volcano mine and, and this is how you prefer to make money, because fishing, especially just throwing a few Nidhogg in, can overshadow anything you'd make mining, but some people just absolutely hate fishing. And rather than have it keep you back from being doing your upgrades, you can, you can mine or do hybrid farming or a combination. So, in the Volcano Mine, basically you're going to want to get down to level 41. Once you hit level 41, you can start earning more gemstones in a much larger amount. You'll be getting a lot more nodes of gemstones, and that's when it starts being more profitable. But the things you'll get uh, starting at 49 is going to be Garnet, Ruby... Uh, sapphire and diamond are going to be starting in that level. Um, they tend to be a lot more prevalent in later periods, but they come in spurts. It's not all going to be the same. You'll want to review the document to go over individuals. But if you get down to level 51, you'll get more topaz. If you get down to level 61, you'll get more emeralds. But all of those are going to be fairly decent priced uh, money-wise. I tend to find a lot more rare ore and rare gems combined in the volcano mine than any of the other mines, and they're a lot more condensed. So you'll your pockets will be fuller even if they're not 100% alexandrite or whatever. So that's a couple of things to keep in mind for mining. Now the third thing is going to be hybrid farming. Now the hybrid farming, what you'll want to do is focus on taking your seeds that you can just get normally and raising them outside of their normal crop area. So for example, uh, turnips are a good one. So if you take turnips down here and you grow them in Lily Kala on the Lily Kala farm right here, um, they you have a chance of growing a turnip and it ha causing a hybrid to show up as heart of the earth. When you see that you planted a turnip and you have a weird looking turnip, when you pick it, it will say new crop the first time that you get it heart of the earth 
So you will also have the original turnip plus the heart of the earth, which means you'll still get the 44 coins for your original turnip. But then if you sell the heart of the earth, which I wouldn't recommend because that's a special case, the heart of the earth is worth 132. So if you sold both, not only would you be making more than just the turnip of the 44, you'd be making about three times that because the heart of the earth is almost, is what, over double what the turnip is worth? Now, the heart of the earth can be turned, if you have finished the storyline and the goddess has been restored, you can go to the goddess, you can go to the goddess shrine here and a bigger shrine here. When you go there, you can hand her a heart of the earth crop and ask her to make it into seeds. Once you have the seeds for the heart of the earth, I give it back to her again to have her make more seeds and then give her another heart of the earth to start making seeds because it takes a few days for each of this. But then you'll start making enough seeds and then here in the volcano area where the farm is right here, you can plant the heart of the earth seeds and then they will hybridize into something you need to upgrade your storage capacity, which is the giant's heart. Now, just looking at a money wise, say that you've already done your upgrade and you just have a bunch of heart of the earth, you can plant the heart of the earth and then grow it into a giant's heart. And then if you want, you could make seeds of the giant's heart and then just grow a bunch of giant's heart because giant's heart by itself is 672 but if you hybridize it out of heart of earth you'll also have the 132 that the heart of earth is worth as well as the giant's heart of the 672 so one other thing to note the heart of earth is a special commodity because it also has a secondary hybrid area out of autumn conditions which you'd want to plant it up here at the autumn farm area in near Herbsburg. If you plant a heart of the earth there, you could hybridize it into a maiden's heart. Now, if you're just farming, as long as you follow the guide that I put in here by planting the seeds outside of their normal area and you just make sure that they're watered and if they look sickly, fertilize them, You'll have a chance of hybridizing them, but if you keep farming them constantly, what you'll see is here in your encyclopedia, you can see my turnips. I've harvested 51 times, which has made me intermediate. Now, I believe you go from a newbie to intermediate at 45 times harvested. So that's going to increase my ability to have that turnip hybridize into the heart of the earth or the red turnip, depending on where I plant it. You can see on my um, encyclopedia here, it shows that the areas that it mutates in. So if I take the heart of the earth, the sun is the um, summertime. It can, I just plant the turnips in a summertime condition and I could hybridize into a heart of earth. The leaf is the fall condition. That means that I can get a red turnip by planting a turnip in the Herbsburg area. So here's another example with beets. You could plant it in the summertime to get a water beet, the wintertime to get a snow beet, etc. So this hybrid the heart of the earth, you can see I've already hybridized it into a giant's heart out of the volcano, which is that big mountain. But if you take it to a, if you look at the Sparta there under the mutations for the phalanx, it's got that little hills with the, um, squiggly lines underneath it that's supposed to be the desert area so but it has to be in the oasis there is a farm that looks like it might be desert because it's close by right here 
but this is actually not considered desert. It's considered uh, flatlands. So this one is not a good one if you're trying to hybridize. You have to make it all the way into here, which is much easier after you drop the wall of Zimigrad and open up the navigation into here so that the Harvest Goddess stops the big storm and it starts having normal weather patterns. That's when you'll want to move here and start doing your hybrids in, in the desert. So, what is the most fulfilling way to make money? Let's check. I'm right here at my box and I've got some examples of everything in here that you can sell. Just in all of my pockets, I've gathered several items just to show you what you're looking at. So, here is a basic lava mosquito fish. It is very basic. You can get it in the lava areas. Same areas that I got these two nidhogs. A single nidhog by itself. You can see at the bottom of the screen where it shows you how many hearts. The price is 7,700. Just for zero stars. One star put it all the way up to 11,200. So that is a huge amount. Look, those two fish by themselves, 18,900. Let's say we then also throw in that little tiny lava mosquito fish. We're already almost to 20,000. One day of fishing out of that uh, volcano summit. Now here's a hybrid example. So these are hybrids off of the fodder corn. Gold silver corn is grown out of the spring area. It is one of the first hybrids you can get since the fodder corn you can get in the breezy plains. And if you plant it in Lectonbury, it oftentimes will hybridize very easily. You can see this one is a one star fodder corn because I fertilized it every single day in order to try to increase my chances to get it to hybridize. So you can raise your skill level by harvesting it a lot. That helps you get more hybrids. It also helps increase your star level or chances to get a star level. Fertilizing with just regular basic fertilizer, not compost, but running the compost through your fertilizer maker every day gets you more of a chance to get both stars and hybrids. So if you're lucky enough to get both, this fodder corn at one star is 96. At, at zero stars, it's at 44, I believe. Let me double check. Yeah, fodder corn is 66. So that, that gives you 30 extra coins just for that one star. You also get, instead of a half a heart, it's worth a whole heart. When you turn it into fodder, instead of three meals, it's worth four. So, and then if you also get the gold silver corn, you get an additional 480 coins. You also could eat it for two full hearts and have two minutes of combating against tiredness. So if you stayed up too late, you can eat one of this and have the two minutes where that stamina loss from being up too late doesn't affect you. Now, here's just a basic pumpkin just to, to show you the difference between basic and one star level since I didn't have a, a regular fodder corn to show with the gold sil silver corn which a regular base gold silver corn still worthwhile at 330 especially compared to the 66 it normally is. So here's a regular pumpkin for 44. This one I got up to one star and that's 64. Here's what I was talking about with the turnip. A regular turnip is 44. Hybridizing it into a heart of earth is 132. Taking that, turning it into seeds and hybridizing that in the volcano gives you the giant's heart, which is 462. Now, I also wanted to include some things here for consideration. If you have farm animals, obviously you're going to be making pro produce, um, things that you can include. So here's just a regular cow's milk for 88, but a Jersey milk, which is the brown cow that you can unlock after Herbsburg hits its fourth star, um, is 198. So it's over, 
What, 110 coins more than a regular cow's milk? Here's a basic egg, which is 55. You unlock the Arcana egg. Once you have Lectonbury at four, unlocked the four stars and Lily Kala's wall dropped, you can get the Arcana egg or Arcana chick, which grows up to make eggs, which is 110 per egg and a full heart. Um, this is just a regular fried egg out of a regular one half heart egg. You only have one full heart and 66, but that's 10, 11 more than a regular egg. An Arakana egg, if you were to cook it, turns into one and a half hearts, but to sell it is less than if you were just to sell the Arakana egg. So that's why you want to be careful when you're cooking because not everything is profitable when you're cooking it. A silky chicken is available when you get Lectonbury to five stars and drop the Herbsburg wall. So you can buy a silky chicken and as you can see one and a half hearts is available 154 gold by itself. Now, if you were to cook these, you're more likely to get a higher quality egg. The, if you were to make a fried egg, you can turn it in and get stars with your eggs if your produce is higher quality. So I might get a fried egg with this one that has two stars, which would open up a lot more hearts and be a lot more valuable. But if you cook it and you're not lucky and you get a regular egg, you've lost a lot of the price you would have gotten selling the silky egg, egg by itself. So until in your, again, you're going to your encyclopedia, but you're going to, from this screen, navigate over to the cooked dishes. If you go down to, I haven't explored cooking a lot in here, but I will, just not yet in this playthrough. You can see I am a master at the fried egg at 155. So you switch from newbie to intermediate at 45. You switch to master, I think at 100. I'm pretty sure it's at 100. And then if you, no, hang on. So it goes newbie, intermediate, and then it goes advanced and then master. So the advanced one is at I want to say 80 and then the master is at over a hundred. So here's the newbie cooked nine times. I don't think I've really cooked anything as much. Yeah, here's advanced to 81 and advanced at 137. So I think master you get at 140 because I was getting advanced and master confused. So just a few things to think about if you're thinking of trying to make cooking valuable, you have to double check your ingredients. Make sure that you get the, if you're trying to get starred foods, make sure it's something you've mastered and use the higher level ingredients. Now, going back to the uh, things that you can sell directly from animals, here is the regular sheep wool. 220. The black sheep wool is 550. Um, these don't change in quality, but if you upgrade your shears, you can get two at a time every time you shear one sheep, which increases the value of how much you get, especially since you only can shear them once every three days, I believe. Now, We've only gone over crops, cooking, and base products from your animals. There's also hybridizing here with flowers. So don't forget an example of getting a one star flower from a base. The water lotus is 66. A one star would make it 96. So there's the extra 30 right there just from getting the one star. That may not be worth it if you're throwing a bunch of fodder because that's going to cost you in uh, fertilizer. I mean, not fodder, fertilizer. If you're throwing a bunch of fertilizer on your crop trying to get it to hybridize, 
and you just get a one star, that's only 30 coins that you've earned over not fertilizing it. So the marguerite here, if you plant it in the winter time, you can get a purple marguerite. You can see the original marguerite price is 44. Purple marguerite is 132. You can then turn the purple marguerite into seeds and plant those in... I want to say... I think it might be desert. Nope. You can replant the purple marguerites in a... another area and it will give you... Oh, you take the purple marguerites that you put in winter, you plant the seed of a purple marguerite in spring and you could possibly get a giant marguerite. So if you're looking to finish out your uh, encyclopedia of crops, the purple marguerite's worth 132, a giant marguerite's worth 396. So that's another thing to consider if you're hybridizing, plant your mar save a bunch of marguerites, plant them in the Zimograd farm, or really it doesn't have to be Zimograd. There's another farm that's right here that you could plant in. It's not my favorite place unless you're moved there, but it doesn't give you any bonuses to culture, so I rarely do. This walk from here over to here is not that long, but you have to be careful because it's always gonna be cold. So just having it right here where my farm is located is usually where I set my hybrids up for cold weather areas. You can also plant them anywhere using winter fertilizer, but you'll want to have a lot of those so you can fertilize it every day as it grows. And then you have a better chance of getting it to hybridize using the seasonal fertilizer um, wherever you have it planted. Because the seasonal fertilizer is considered top tier fertilizer and increases its likelihood of gaining stars and hybridizing. As long as you're using the season that you want it to hybridize in, not the season that the seed is designed to grow in. So if I put, if I grew a marguerite here in, um, on my home farm in Providence, it would just be considered flatlands. But if I put winter fertilizer on it every day, I could get a purple marguerite and then if I tur have the goddess turn that into seeds and I plant it right back here on this same farm but instead of using winter fertilizer I use spring fertilizer that purple marguerite has a higher chance of going giant so there's three considerations if you want to do hybridizing to help you raise money one is how many you've already planted if you have a skill level of master then you're going to be a lot more likely to get it to hybridize. Or if you want, there's some plants like the strawberry or um, I think asparagus that you can make a giant crop of. You'll want to wait until you've mastered growing that crop and then you will plant it in the middle of a nine squares of tilled soil. You'll want to use the expensive fertilizer of whatever um, conditions is best for the one you're trying to giant. So if you're doing strawberries, you would do a springtime fertilizer um, and make sure it's got enough room. So if you're trying the giant, I would say use a big farmland like this one because you're and you're going to need the really big uh, red sprinklers from Doc that you unlock after you've dropped all the walls. So that's a breakdown of the hybrids. Let's take a look at the money. So here's an ice trumpet. You can get these seeds out of sprites in the winter area. Eventually you can buy ice trumpets out of the tool shop, not the workshop, but the general store tool shop in Zimograd. Once you have raised enough stars, 
You can replant ice trumpet seeds. The angel's trumpet grows in the desert area, and that's a hybrid. The devil's trumpet grows in the volcano, and you can see they are both worth the same amount, even though they are both hybrids of the same flower. But that is a huge jump in the value. So instead of 66 and then, what, 132 or whatever, this one is going 66 to 231. So that's something to consider. This white rose is a DLC rose. If you plant it in the summertime, you can get King of Roses, which is the largest rose, and it is black. But you can see it only goes from 66 to 198, which is still better than some of the other prices. But, um, like this is 44 to 132, it's more similar to what you're looking at in the difference there. So just some things to think about when you're considering crops. Now let's take a look at ore and gems. Now I didn't include the ore in the list of money making. It can be very lucrative, but even in the areas where the ore is more likely to pop up, it's still not going to be super easy to find in large quantities quickly. So yes, you could get a big handful of adamantite um, and it is 1,650 as raw processed 2,475. So it's, it looks like it's worthwhile, but you have to be very far down in the mine to get a lot of adamantite. And even in the areas that it is most plentiful, it is still not going to be as plentiful. You'd be more likely to find a bunch of rubies than you would be to find adamantite, where the ruby is only worth 275 uncut and then cut is 413. But say you walk out of there with three adamantite ore, but you've got 50 rubies, that's going to be a huge difference. Now, I don't know how realistic it is to get 50 rubies in a run. I generally only go for a few hours a day at the end of my day if I'm looking for something in particular. But if you don't like fishing, you absolutely hate it, it takes away from your joy of the game, it is a way that you can pad your pockets without having to fish. So let's say, let's say that we do multiple things. We do fishing, we sell uh, our daily stuff that we got from our animals. Let's say we don't sell cooking because we use that to feed ourselves. But let's say we throw in some of our um, hybrids, maybe the ones we don't use as much, maybe some flowers that we aren't don't have plans for. There's some more animal products. This is too useful. We probably wouldn't sell that low of a val of an item unless we have tons of it. So let's say we just sell these. So this, let's say we did all of this in one day. We sell it all in one thing. You're looking at tw over 20,000. Now a consideration when you have that kind of money going in there, your bonus to the town's culture level is not going to get a bonus. I think it cuts out around 20,000, maybe it's 29,000. You'll still get a large bonus, but it won't be as large. It'll, it'll be exponentially larger than if you just ship a couple of items, but shipping any items at all helps give you a bigger boost than not shipping any. So just keep that in mind. If you are planning a less productive day the next day, you may want to take out, say, one of your fish and sell it the next day, just so that you can maintain your culture levels. So that is several ways to earn money in the game. Um, I will make sure that my document that I put together is available, a link to it, uh, down in the comments. Thank you for watching. If you like got anything out of this tutorial, please like the tutorial so I know to continue doing things like this. Um, 
I am working on a walkthrough going through the entire game. Um, feel free to subscribe if you want to be alerted when I put up my next tutorial or walkthrough. And if you have any questions, any comments, feel free to comment below. I try to be very responsive to any of the comments that I see. If you would like a particular tutorial, feel free to suggest it and I will make it for you. Thanks and have a great day.